what is going on guys then let's go to uv map in maya so there's a couple of ways you can get around doing this but i always use this exact same technique for every asset every asset you see right now that's in pink or dark red has been uv mapped doing it this way so i'm going to show you how i do this and i hope it'll be helpful for you guys so first off i'm going to show you basically the opposite of this just to help you sort of understand what uv mapping is i guess so I don't know if you guys ever had this, but back in school, I remember coming into class and I teach her basically got a piece of paper with this shape on it. So this shape here is what this is, but unwrapped. And our teacher would have said, ego, here's a piece of paper, here's the shape, cut it out and fold it into a cube. We're essentially doing the opposite. We're getting our shape, cutting it in certain areas, creating seams and unfolding it to, or unwrapping it to go on a piece of paper. You need to do this so that way the software will allow you to paint it because basically in the computer's mind you're painting on this even in substance painting when you're painting directly onto your object you're you know you're still painting on that flat surface so you need to get that done that's essentially what it is so i'm going to unwrap this part up here and maybe even this bit here just sort of two sort of slightly different shapes so First off, let's go to UV Edit Open to do that. Go UV, UV Editor. Now, as you can see, I already have quite a nice UV layout for this. So the whole train is one UV square for me, or at least this part of the train. This other part is a separate UV square. Now, there's some empty gaps. The reason, so this, this could be seen as bad. The reason it could be seen as bad is because even going back to the paper analogy, you know, wasted space means you're not using the whole piece of paper, which in turn means you're wasting you're wasting the paper. You're killing more trees. Um, in UVing, basically, like not having a place like this means you're missing out on resolution. If I were to take these pieces here, for example, and I was like, you know what? Let's rotate them around. And let's pop them in there. Oh, look, we've used up more space. The reason this isn't brilliant is if you have this ticked on, so this thing here, check a map again we've also got this on which makes the shells go blue which is easy. good check a map you can see this the squares are smaller here the reason that's an issue is because when it goes texture it that means this part's got higher resolution which means this part's gonna look crisper nicer texture's gonna look great this part's gonna look worse this example is really bad because this part takes up more area so having that part look better makes no sense Sometimes you get away with making other bits higher resolution, other bits to take up your UV space, but a lot of the time I like to keep them all the same scale because I just want it all to be the same texture resolution. So let's undo what I did there. So we're going to unwrap this bit here first. So the first part of my technique is I, I say technique, my methodology, whatever you want to call it, is I will make sure I go faces, select the area I want. I've got this area here. And now if I want. You modify and go unitize. This will make it unwrap each polygon to its own polygon here. What that means is if I show you here, you can see like this. Obviously, that's not the result we want. You know, that's fine. Now, you should find your seams first, but I'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't find your seam. So we go cut, so move and so. You'll get a result like this, which you don't need to care about really is you're going to unfold this, modify, unfold. Now I'll click this just in case I've got some different settings than you guys, but this is the settings I got. Fly and close. Now, on here, the UV looks pretty nice. Now you can click this button here, which is your distortion, and I'll show you where it's being distorted, I guess. As you can see, red here and blue here. I don't always use that tool because you can, if you've got this one on, you'll check them out, you can see that this is distorting. Look at that. If I went to go into Photoshop and I would draw a straight line, this face here, and this face here. If I would draw a straight line across here, the straight line will go, yeah, yeah, uh, which isn't really what we want. So to fix this, you again, you need to find seams where you want your object to cut so that way it can unfold, you know, more nicely or nicer, should I say. I want my cuts to be on each of the sides. I don't have a bottom to this either, so I don't need to worry about the bottom connecting. So, edge, so hold right click, go to edge. Double clicking will select the edge loop. I have quite convenient edge loops that go to this piece here. 
if you if your edge loops aren't like that and you go around the whole thing so you double click it and you get something like this all you gotta do is hold control click one edge click the other and get essentially what i'm doing now where i'm cutting an edge off my ones do come to a point though so i'm going to be points all points you want you can do this on this map as well you can always come over here and go oh you know that part could be cut that part could be cut and you go around it manually doing it on the actual UV map instead now you're gonna want to go cut so cut select the whole thing again so uvs right click uvs select the whole thing hold control right click to uv shell that's how i get to that's how i set the whole show you could double click it anyway if you go to uvs and just double click it'll go to uv shell anyway now go modify, go unfold again, or control V, which is always obviously gonna be faster using a shortcut, like that, and you get pretty good results. But again, I did my cuts after moving sewing and unfolding. I would, it's usually better to find your seams before you even do that. So if we reset this, the whole thing. Now, yeah, so if I, so, I've only unitized it now. If I hold right click, select it, you'll get all the edges. So basically set, make sure you set all the edges of your objects. So if I go to faces, double click, hold control, right click, two edges, two edges, you could do it that way too. And then start deselecting. So hold control and double click and it will deselect an edge loop. And then move and sew it. And essentially, so now select this to UV shell. So hold control, right click to UV shell. And unfold to control U. Boom. And that's the same result we had earlier. Basically, either way is fine, but if you leave your if you leave finding seams to afterwards, sometimes it can be a bit awkward on more complex shapes. Again, something like this. Same method. Unitize. Let every edge. Oops, let every edge. Um, I want to cut around here because otherwise it'd be like an infinite loop. Same here, I wanna have one cut here again, so it's not an infinite loop. Move and sew, select the entire, or like all the UVs, and control U. And boom, done. Let's go it down, you can see how nice these are. You get some, actually no, no, they're all pretty nice, so you get some wrong ones. I also wanna show you one issue, and it took me a while to understand why it happened. If I were to, let's say, separate this, let's say I scaled this up in edit mode. So Blender would call it edit mode. So without editing faces, if I just literally scaled it and then I went to unwrap. So this is obviously very stretchy. I want to unwrap, nothing will happen. To fix this, I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done that so much just in case. Okay, cool. <laughs> to fix this, so again, roll you nothing. To fix this, go, let, make sure your object selected and then go mesh, no, modify. Modify, go modify and go freeze transformations. So if we click actually here, you can see that I've oh, scared it almost directly three times, just uh, just over. Modify freeze, now if we do it, boom, brilliant, done. So if you're getting areas where it's not unfolding very well, it's probably just because you need to freeze your transformations. Last thing I wanna show is the tool called layout. Now layout is probably the most important tool in this process and I'm showing it last. I don't know why, <laughs> I'm just showing it last. Uh, I guess because you need to have your um, areas unfolded first or unwrapped first before using this tool. What this tool does, so I'm just basically gonna set a demonstration here by separating all these, finding these size scale. So now this is my shape. Um, we can ignore the rest of the chain. Let's say this is my final shape. I have a bunch of stuff. Again, as I explained earlier, some things are scaled up high, some things are scaled low. Now the reason I mentioned that again, is because layout. So if I disable some tools that I've got enabled on layout first, so go modify, layout, there you go. I just use the shortcut, so I don't um, always know where it is. So these two will usually be disabled, right? If I click apply, what it will do is it'll put it all in the square for you, which is really nice. So it's all in the square, all quite nice. It actually fits really well. But the problem is, like I explained earlier, this is lower, res uh, high resolution, I should say this, like the squares are smaller. It, look, these squares are huge, which means again, when you go to texture it, that's gonna be very low resolution here, very high resolution here. Now, to fix that, simply, again, if you don't know how to get it open, modify, 
layout. You can use the shortcut, but make sure you've got these settings I'm about to show you enabled. This one's not too important, but if you set your pre-rotation to um, horizontal or vertical, it will basically make them all line up in either across or up and down. Then this is the very important one. Pre-scaling, shell pre-scaling. Set that to preserve 3D ratio. What that will do is it will scale them automatically for you to basically be the same scale in the UV space. So if I, if I close this now, so you can click apply, but I'm just showing you that the shortcut works. So if you press control L, it's a couple of seconds and it didn't save my settings. Let's try that again. Maybe you've got to click the button first. Yeah, there you go. Click it first. And then if I were to scale things down, hopefully those settings will be saved now. So control L. Yep, it will perfectly scale it to now all of the squares being identical. That means when I go to Setstrip now, all of it with the same resolution. And that's pretty much how I UV map everything. Uh, you know, if I connect this now to the rest of the train, and go Bind, and go Control L for layout, it will place them all in there for me. Take a couple of se seconds because it's quite a lot for it to do, and boom. All of it's the same scale, all of it's in the same UV square. Make sure to always keep everything in this square as well, it's very important because that's where the actual textures will be applied. But yeah, I hope to help people who either didn't know the UV map or just people who did know, but it's you know it's giving you a bit more of a shortcut. And yeah, if you guys need to know anything in the future, leave a comment in the um or comment section. If you need to know something about obviously UV mapping, leave that. But if you want a new tutorial on something, ask away. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.